In Dragon's Dogma 2, there are a bunch of different styles of smithing, ways to upgrade your weapons and armor inside of the game, but there really is just one style in particular that's better than all the others, Dwarven Smithing. I'm going to quickly show you the two different ways that you can unlock the smithing style. Let's get into it. Now, like I mentioned just a little bit ago, there are two different ways you can unlock Dorma Smithing. One is actually by going through the Magic Archer quest line to unlock the Magic Archer vocation and help out the Magic Archer's husband get to a certain location. If you haven't done this before, you want to make your way to the exact location I'm showing you here, essentially one of the entrances to the Volcanic Island area. And when you get to this very certain location, you'll come across a dwarf on the hill. He's thrown out his back and you're going to have to escort him back to his house. And thankfully, his house is really not too far away. It's on the tiny little island just across the water where you had first met him on the road. Now, when you do appear here for the very your first time you'll approach the house and the magic archer is actually going to come out greet you and not be too happy about it no need to worry about this because the dwarf is going to let you into the house anyway and you'll soon find out that he throws out his back once again and needs help getting to the hot springs which is further inland of the volcanic island I will say that this area is going to be a little bit higher level, so I would say be about 30 to 40 levels, give or take, to actually go through this area and not get absolutely run over, especially while you're having to escort pretty much defenseless dwarf all the way to the Volcanic Island camp. It is a very easy straight shot from the house to this camp, so I wouldn't really worry about trying to find this area. Just follow the pathing inwards towards the Volcanic Island, and you'll eventually come across this camp if you don't look at the map whatsoever. Now, once you have arrived in this area, it's very easy to find the hot springs. All I have to do is go up a couple ladders, couple scaffolds, couple ramps, and really not difficult to get to this particular area. Once finally here the dwarf will thank you for all the help getting him to this particular location and tell you to visit him at any time that way he can actually help you with the dwarven smithing, improve your weapons, and sell you a couple really really good items for late game which of course if you do this sooner than later will make you really powerful early on. Now to actually use the dwarven smithing technique you want to visit him back at the windwalker's house. So now every time that you go and visit the windwalker's house and he is there you are able to upgrade all your stuff and buy some really strong weaponry if you don't have anything that's stronger than this at the time. Now the only downside to this is that yes he is always going to be available for dormant smithing but he never really moves. He stays at the wind walker's house I'd say 90% of the time unless you're helping him with an escort quest. So every time you would leave and get better stuff you'd have to trek your way all the way back down to the volcanic island camp and particularly their house to get a much stronger upgrade compared to all the other smithing styles you can get inside of Dragon's Dogma 2. This is where the second place you can unlock dwarf and smithing comes in which is actually in Bok Batal but is locked behind a very particular quest line that's only available after you progress the story enough. This will be a randomly given quest line that is actually inside of the Vernworth Castle. This particular guard Roman is going to find you as you're wandering the area and ask you to help him out with a certain item of his. Now this quest line only appeared for me after I went through majority of the Vernworth storyline all the way up to where I had to go to Bok Batal to progress the main storyline. I believe the earliest that you can get this is that you complete all the other missions outside of the coronation mission and then you'll be able to go and do this errand for Roman. Now the particular ask that Roman has for you is repairing a regalia sword or ceremonial sword because it's been in disarray ever since the queen region has basically just said to leave it alone as is it's all rusty and he needs somebody to fix it you could try to give it to the smithy in vernworth but he's basically going to tell you that he's not skilled enough and doesn't know of anybody that could be skilled enough except for maybe one person who is a dwarf in bak batal and there's only one store in all of bak batal that actually has a dwarf smithy which really isn't all that difficult to find if you explore most of bak batal so obviously you need to get to bak batal and make your way all the way to the bottom left side of the main area where you go to all the other stalls and make your way into Brock or Smithy. Obviously, if you have the quest line already active, it shows you exactly where you need to go. But in case you don't and you stumble across it, make your way into here and actually talk to Brocker himself. Now, he's going to quickly tell you that he is no longer in service. He is retired and refuses to pick up his tools ever again. So you're pretty much out of luck with the regalia sword. But as you try to leave, you are stopped by Sarah Brocker's apprentice and tells you to wait while Brocker goes and leaves the Smithy to go have a couple drinks. Sarah will then tell you about certain stones that can only be found inside of Digger's Ruins, which is really close to Bok Batal itself. It's just southeast. It's going to be marked on your map as long as you're progressing this quest line. And this cave is covered in green stones that need to pick up, and you need 15 at the minimum to bring back to Sarah to help progress this quest line. It's very easy to do. Just be prepared for a Minotaur. Return with at least 15 of those green stones to Sarah, and she will try to convince Brogger to help out with this regalia sword of yours. He still refuses, but basically hints at how he can go and fix this if he was going to be working. 
working on it. This gives Sarah a couple different ideas, but you'll have to come back in a day or two in the game until she actually disappears from the smithy. Once this happens, you'll get a notification from Brocker that you're gonna need to go and find her at the mountain base cave on the volcanic island camp. So you have to hike your way all the way back down to this area into this very particular cave system itself, and you'll find her at a new forge. You get a lot of useful items inside this mountain base cave anyway, but for this quest line, you'll be able to see her making a brand new steaming hot hammer, which is supposed to help remake the regalia sword. At that same exact moment, you're gonna need to help her get to the very front of this cave system that you just fought your way all the way through. That way the hammer doesn't cool off before it's actually able to repair the regalia sword. This part is very easy as long as you've cleared out all the enemies in your way from the front to the back. This is the way that I did it. As long as you keep moving at a pace that she can follow, it'll be very easy for you to get this completed. Once outside, she will essentially just complete it herself, let you know that she's doing some final touches on the regalia sword and then meet her back at Brocker Smithy. Once you arrive, you'll have a short conversation between Brocker and Sarah and having them go over to the anvil to help finish up the regalia sword like you had asked them to do. At this point, you are pretty much done with this entire quest line and you're now able to use Dwarven Smithing in Bok Batal. But not from Brocker, it's actually going to be with Sarah. And the quest line is officially over when you turn in the regalia sword back in Vernworth, back to Roman the guard that actually gave you this quest line, you'll get 35,000 gold. But really, you can return the regalia sword anytime you want to when you're back in Vernworth, simply go back up to the castle and turn it into him and you'll get the gold. But at the same time, after you've completed this quest line with Sarah and Brocker, you might as well stay and get the upgrades with Dwarven Smithing, which really is the best of all the worlds of Smithing outside of the Dragonforge Smithing, which you really only should use for the fourth tier of upgrades. But for the first three tiers of upgrades on any weapon or armor, you might as well use Dwarven Smithing because it doesn't add a lot of weight carried. The strength and magic and knockdown power on all weapons that are available for those kind of upgrades goes up significantly significantly more than others. And the same goes for any armor pieces that you have as well. Personally, I am only going to be using Dormuse Smithing going forward unless I have to go to a tier four, which is obviously going to be the Dragonforge. But that is how you can unlock both locations, both ways to use Dwarven Smithing inside of Dragon's Dogma 2. Obviously, they're a little elaborate and one's a lot closer in Bok Batal than is all the way on the Volcanic Island camp. But nonetheless, you have two different areas now, depending on where you're going to actually get Dwarven Smithing to upgrade those end game weapons or post game weapons. As always, I'm curious about your guys' thoughts and feelings about this particular smithing type and this progression of how to get both the dwarven smithing areas available to you. Let me know what your favorite type of smithing is. Is it outside of dwarven smithing for particular weapons? I'm always curious. Let me know down in the comments. Once again, I hope you guys did find this helpful. If you did, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button so I know that it was helpful to you and I will catch you guys in the next video.